Hello and welcome to Orion Today. I'm Joe Johnson. I'm joined by Penny Schultz. Welcome, Penny. It is so good to be here today, Joe. Uh, what's happening over at the new uh, municipal complex? Y'all settled in over there yet? Yeah, we really are. Everyone loves the new place. Um, people come in every day and tell us how wonderful it is and <laughs> easy to find their way around in the building. And we're really excited to have that really amazing gift for the community oh, and the so workers beautiful. too. We're mm -hmm. all settled in and ready to go. That's fantastic. You know what, I was watching a meeting the other day, and I don't know how long this is going to be an issue, but I was watching a meeting that was in the boardroom there, and the sun was shining right into the boardroom. Has that been a problem in the boardroom? Um, we don't notice that because it's yeah. coming in from the back, yeah, yeah. but man, am I grateful for that sunlight. Because <laughs> we were in the basement in the old place, and oh, you had a little right. peephole in that's that one exit door. That's a new experience for you. Yeah yeah, 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 so I don't mind it so much, but I think um, we'll get settled in and maybe put a little reflective glass uh, yeah. film on there. Oh yeah, it's such a beautiful facility. It really is. So yeah, speaking of sunlight, spring is uh, pretty much here. We've been uh, getting a little taste of warm weather. Have you been uh, enjoying the arrival of spring? Yeah, I have. Um, I've been out in my yard a lot. My husband and I, we live on the lake and it's just nice to be outside listening to nature. You know, sometimes you're not able to get out there and go for a walk, and but it's nice when you can even work in nature. So we're having a good time, enjoying it. And Blue Herring today, I was um, on my way to work and there was one that walked right out in front of me as I was uh. driving, like it owned the road. <laughs> so of course I stopped quick. <laughs> but that's massive. the beauty of living in this community is we can really get in there and enjoy the nature. Yeah. We gotta I, watch out for it though. I joke that Michigan is bipolar because what we had like yeah. an 80 degree day last weekend and then it dips back down into the 40s. So I have a winter coat, a hoodie and a fleece jacket. <laughs> <laughs> all standing by and, and I checked the weather before I head out to see which one I need to grab. Yeah, I have a um, just about the same kind of opportunity in my car, an umbrella and ice scraper side by side. <laughs> so we do need it. But this is Michigan and I'm pretty thankful know. that we can have a diversity of the day, um, all four <laughs> seasons in one if we can get <laughs> one like right. that. I just got back from uh, California. I was out oh. there for a week on vacation and uh, I was a little disappointing in that the weather wasn't as warm as I had hoped. Mm -hmm. Now, the first day that I arrived, it was 99. It was oh a my. really hot day the very first day. But then it cooled down to about the mid-60s, which is pleasant, but you still got to wear a hoodie. And sure. I, I wore long pants. I packed almost nothing but shorts and T-shirts, and then I had to wear long pants every day. Yeah. Um, but it was nice. It was nice to get away. Did a lot of fun stuff. Went to a lot of events and places I've always wanted to visit and that sort of thing. So That's beautiful. You, yeah. Did you fly? Well, I flew out there, yeah. Um, when I got my ticket, my round trip ticket, it, tickets were still really cheap. And I flew Spirit for under $300 round trip. Oh, great. After I got my ticket, gas prices went up mm -hmm. and people were paying double that for round trip tickets. I can believe that. Well, yeah. I'm glad you came back. That might have been hard to do, but it I'm was, glad you came back. That last day, I had to put a lot of thought into whether or not to come back. But <laughs> here I am hosting this show. So, yeah, you know, I always judge the success of my trips to California by the number of celebrities that I encounter. Ooh. And I stopped counting at 50. No I, kidding. <laughs> oh, I my met gosh. 50 celebrities over the course of the week. Most of them were all in one location. There's an event called the Hollywood Show. And, uh, you know, B-listers, C-listers, they're all put in a banquet room. They're all sitting at tables. And you go from table to table and you meet celebrities and get autographs oh, and pose it. for pictures. Uh, some of the highlights were uh, uh, some of the cast members from Back to the Future I got to meet. Um, and the guys from Chips, you remember the show Chips, yeah. Ponch and John? I got arrested by those guys. Oh, that was a great awesome, photo I bet. That. <laughs> um, and one yeah. of the highlights was, do you remember Charo? Charo, the coochie coochie yeah. uh, Spanish woman. She yeah. is still coochie active. Coochie? Yeah, she's still oh coochie God. coochieing. <laughs> and she was active and she was sweet. And Aww. I had a little bit of a conversation starter because she's from Spain and my mom was from Spain. Sure. So I got to talk to her about my mom a little bit. And she said she's looking down on us from heaven right now. And Aww. it was kind of a neat moment. And That's beautiful. got a great photo with her and everything. I so. want to see that photo. I'll share it with you. Yeah, yeah. So that was a lot of fun. That Did you that tell them that you're a hometown celebrity too? No, no, that doesn't fly out there. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm more regional here. We like that. 
<laughs> <laughs> and then on the very last day that I was there, I was just killing time before flying home. I went up to the Hollywood sign, mm -hmm. and I got some great pictures of the Hollywood sign. And as I was getting ready to leave, and it's all very hilly, so you're walking uphill and everything. As I was getting ready to leave, I passed this couple, and the gentleman was huffing and puffing and sweating. It looked like he was really struggling. And it kind of caught my eye as we passed each other. And I stopped, I turned, I said, Patrick, is that you? And he stopped and turned and said, hello. It was Patrick Stewart, who plays Captain Picard on the Star Trek series. Oh my he's, goodness. He's uh, Professor X on the X-Men movies. And he, like a tourist, he was at the Hollywood sign with his wife, Sonny. And uh, who, who would you, I never would have predicted that I would have ran into a major celebrity at the Hollywood sign. I love that. It's like they say, he's just like one of us. He's yes. a tourist going to the yep. Hollywood sign. I bet he appreciated that you spotted him too. He was very cordial, mm -hmm. and I, sure. I did ask for a selfie, but he was, he was kind of winded from going uphill, and he was sweating. Plus, there was a surprising uh, large crowd because it was Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. I didn't think there'd be a lot of people out and about, but I guess teens were on spring break, and so there were a lot of people out there. So he didn't want to draw attention to himself, so he politely asked that we not do a selfie. But it was great That's just okay. meeting him and saying hi. So. We had some of that great weather here for Easter. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. It was such a beautiful, beautiful day. How did you uh, celebrate? Um, went to church mm -hmm. at, with my family. It was beautiful and ate ham, of course. Yeah. You know, we always like to have a great big meal and, oh, sure. and just enjoyed being together, playing a few board games. It's pretty simple at our house. That's awesome. Um, but it was nice just to be together. You were with your sister out there too, weren't well, she you? Well, she only stayed the first few days and then oh, she okay. flew home. But on Easter Sunday, the family that hosted me out there, they have a loft that they allow me to stay at rent free, oh, which is nice. That's beautiful. Uh, they had a nice little luncheon on uh, Easter Sunday. So I got to have lunch with them and get caught up before I headed to the airport. I love home, that. So. That's beautiful. It was a great week and uh, just a lot of fun. I had so much fun. We had helicopters all over this place. What, what was um, the occasion? Egg drop. Oh, Everywhere. Is that at Canterbury? Did yeah, they Canterbury do had two days, and then the River Church Lake Orion, mm -hmm. Pastor Josh Yates and their crew, they had a helicopter egg drop too. So there was a lot of birds in the air that day. <laughs> <laughs> it was neat. Well, Canterbury Village, almost every weekend, there's something going on at Canterbury yeah. Village for families and stuff. It's really bustling over there. And if you drive past it now, you see a big T Rex at the entrance of Canterbury Village. They're getting geared up for another round of dino stroll. That is so. Oh, good. And uh, I got to shoot video of it last mm -hmm. year, and I felt like a little kid. I was grinning ear to ear. It's a lot of fun. It's beautiful. I'm glad that it's drawing people in. Yeah. And people are outside. Oh, man, is that nice. It is, yeah. It's good. So lots of stuff happening in the community. Uh, one event I got to witness firsthand uh, th this past Saturday was a group of volunteers were over at Greens Park. Oh, yeah. Uh, they had gotten a grant to make some improvements over at Greens Park. And I happened to pop in and catch some of the activity and uh, put together a little piece. And you are the very first people to uh, see this segment that I put together. So check it out and enjoy. Back in September of 2021, Lake Orion was one of 25 communities across the nation that received a hometown grant from T-Mobile. Recently, a small army of volunteers went to work putting that money to good use. On the morning of Saturday, April 23rd, dozens of volunteers assembled in Greens Park to begin working on a new playground structure. Organizers were hoping to complete the project in just one day. Um, well, it's an entire play structure, so we have got some climbing areas, some rope areas, some slides, so lots of different options for kids of multiple ages. Yeah, this is so exciting. I couldn't sleep last night, actually, <laughs> just like thinking about this project and how it was um, actually going to happen. Um, you know, we've had the equipment sitting in our DPW yard for a couple months. We had it, we ordered it, had it delivered, but now to actually see pieces being put together. You know, if I look behind you, I can actually see posts and platforms being constructed and pulled together. And I'm, it's just really exciting to, to see the community rally around and have excitement about something. Way back in the spring of 2021, DDA Director Molly Lalone notified the village of T-Mobile's hometown grant. The application was submitted in June and in September, T-Mobile presented Lake Orion with a check for $50,000. 
T-Mobile, um, over the next five years, will be um, participating in, you know, supporting small town community projects uh, with over $25 million available in grants, um, up to $50,000 you can apply for uh, your small town. And we just want to invest in communities where we're bringing 5G into, um, and Lake Orion has to be, ha is one of those. You know, this is a really huge deal for us. Um, I've been on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee for probably nine years now, and we've never been able to complete a project of this size. So to have the generosity of T-Mobile and their hometown grant to be able to complete a project that we have just dreamed about for a long time of having a, a structure here for kids of all ages um, means a lot, to, especially to those who have served on the Parks Committee and have just put in so many hours working to try to make something fun happen here. The Greens Park project is the first of two playground bills to take place in Lake Orion. The second will take place on May 14th in Children's Park in the Village. This upcoming project was made possible thanks to the Lake Orion DDA. Yeah, we, the existing structure is deteriorating, particularly the smaller toddler one. There are bolts protruding and it was becoming a safety issue. And then the, the larger structure too is showing its age. Um, protective coating chipping off, revealing you know metal that's rusting, there's cracking in panels. And so rather than wait until it becomes so unsafe where we have to take it out and they ha don't have anything to play on, um, we prioritized and really worked hard to um, find a solution to get it replaced now. If you missed the chance to volunteer your time on the Greens Park project, volunteers will be needed to build the playground structures in Children's Park on May 14th. To get involved or for more information, contact Village Offices at 248-693-8391. So like I said, uh, lots going on this past weekend. While that was going on, there was a Orion Greenup where volunteers were out in the community cleaning up stretches of road along uh, throughout Orion Township. And uh, so that was going, that launched at Camp Agawam. Um, and all kinds of events are coming up. That's why we have Jennifer Vesna joining us from Orion Township Parks and Rec. Jennifer, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Warm weather is coming. That means fun outdoor events. Uh, what is happening this spring and summer in Orion Township? Well, everything is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Not everything is happening outdoors. Some things are happening indoors. This weekend, as a matter of fact, we have the Mother's Day Marketplace Craft Show. That's right. And that will be held indoors uh, because I'm a little leery about holding anything in April outdoors. Yeah, yeah, it's a little early for that to take that risk. It yeah. sure is. Yep. So, so what can people expect at the Mother's Day Marketplace? Um, they can expect to have lots of things to shop from. Uh, we'll have about 30 different vendors all throughout the Orient Center. Uh, everything from home decor, bath and body, a little bit of everything that you think you need to have. Yeah, and Mother's Day is what, just a week and a half, two weeks away, less than that, so Absolutely. now's your chance to do some shopping, right? Yep, Teacher Appreciation Day is also coming up, so there might be a special <laughs> teacher you got to shop for. Cinco de Mayo is right around the corner. <laughs> I love the events where you can buy things that vendors have created and spent so much time getting ready for us. Everything is unique, one of a kind. Yes. Yeah, and you're supporting local business, local entrepreneurs, so that's great. What else is going on? Oh, I have a whole laundry list full of stuff. <laughs> um, so um, we brainstormed um, some ideas, and we have a new league coming up, and it is an adult cornhole league. Oh, wow. So that will be starting up early in May. Uh, you can sign up your team through Parks and Rec, and it will be held out back at the Orient Center. Behind the Orient Center? Behind the Orient nice, Center. Uh, well, you know, I feel like that space is underutilized. I'm excited that you're going to be trying to uh, we, have some more events back we there. We don't use it that much. We use it for Summer Sizzle, which mm -hmm. will be oh, coming up in June. But other than that, we don't use it too often. Once in a while, we'll have outdoor yoga or Zumba or cardio mm -hmm. drum. Some of those activities happen outdoors. But it's, it's, it's unusual in Michigan that the weather is perfect for a fitness class. Where now, do you want them to oh, sign up? They, will, they can sign up either in the office here in the Orion okay. Center or they can go online to orionparks.com. For I the Cornhole League, do you, need, do you need a team or can you sign up as an individual? I believe you need a team. Okay. I believe you need a team. So we're Tyler forward, Carpenter is... Well, these are tough questions you're asking <laughs> me. <laughs> I was expecting that. Tyler Carpenter is our resident uh, expert on that. So if you have questions, Tyler's your guy. 
So I've seen the cornhole tournaments out at El Opalooza. They're diehards. Mm -hmm. They are. Oh, yeah, this is going to be very competitive. Yeah. And it's it yet another time. sport I'm terrible at. I, I can't get it in there to save my life. So. I'll get on the team with you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it our best shot. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself. Uh, all right, so then after cornhole? After cornhole, we have um, the Dragon Dash, of oh, course. Yeah. I believe the Dragon Dash is probably been around for more than 20 years, probably mm -hmm. pushing 22, 23 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, that'll be exciting, our 5K. It'll start and end here at the Orient Center and use the uh, Pollyann Trail down towards uh, what used to be Old Township Hall, turn around and come right back here to the Orient Center. Uh, the people seem to love that event. Usually get at least 100 or so participants. We do. Right? Registration is going well. Awesome. It'll be a good event, hoping hoping for good weather. We'll my, my daughter signed up for that. Did she? Oh, she couldn't wait. It's the kickoff one. Yeah. It's basically what gets all the other runs thinking, we should do this. Yeah. yeah. So it does. It I love the, the Dragon the Dash. Mm -hmm. And everyone gets a medal at the finish line? Everybody gets a medal at the finish line. doesn't matter what your time is. That's awesome. So it's That's a good great. run for beginners. Great. And then what, outdoor garage sale? Outdoor uh, garage sale we have in early June. Um, so we'll have the garage sale outside. We'll have the Toy and Comic Expo inside. In between, we'll have a Shred It event where you can mm. bring your Shred It materials from 11 to 1. A little bit of everything. Yeah, I just did some spring cleaning. I cleaned out this closet that was really cluttered and just found all, all sorts of old documents and stuff. So. Don't throw those in the trash. You nope. got to take those to shred it, and uh, they'll they'll do that for you. They'll right? take care of it for you, so that nobody can go through your personal information. That's Jennifer, great. we get calls all the time at Township Hall. People can't wait. This is a great service for everyone. It is. It yeah. is a nice service for the community. Mm -hmm. We have people that bring them in by the box, and with shred it, there is no limit. You can really bring as much as you need to get rid of. We do try and reserve the event for household use rather than businesses. But you're more than welcome to bring your, your boxes in and get and rid of those. Can they watch and shred it? Is it happening right on site? Or do they <laughs> it does it happen destroy? on site. Um, it's a truck that's enclosed, so you'll put your documents in a big hopper. The hopper goes up, and then he dumps it. So if you want to wait, you can wait and watch it. But sometimes it takes a little while for that hopper to get filled up and to get dumped into the machine. Mm. And that shred it service is the same service the township uses, so they're very dependable. Oh, wow. and very. Yeah, we can trust them. Yep. The uh, garage sale and the comic expo, um, still looking for vendors for that? Selling? We are still looking for vendors. So if you have merchandise in your home, merchandise, because <laughs> what's one man's trash is another <laughs> man's treasure. So if you have things you need to get rid of, um, you can call the Parks and Rec Department. You can reserve a spot, and you'll get a parking lot spot, park your car, set up your um, items in the other spot, and sell away. The last Toy and Comic Expo that I took part in, I had another vendor approach me and bought my entire inventory. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was done. I was out, baby. How'd you feel but, about that? Uh, I had mixed feelings. I yeah. kind of regret it now, but most of what I had was just duplicates and stuff. But uh, uh, at, at the time, I was, I was grateful to not have that burden of lugging all that stuff around, but... In hindsight, I, I kind of miss it. Sure. <laughs> so that that's means a great I hobby. I don't see you at the toy and comic expo anymore. I know, anymore. but I'm I'm reassembling my inventory, so I may return at some point. So we're yeah. going to hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> right. At some point, I mean, I have a huge collection at home, so every once in a while, I need to thin things out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right, and then, oh my gosh, the concert season's not too far away. When does that you get You can believe it. The concert season will kick off. Let's see, I got my dates right here so I don't miss anything. June 14th, which is actually earlier than we usually start okay. it. We are starting a week early. We're going nine weeks, which is exciting. Um, North Oakland Concert Band will kick off the season on June 14th. Uh, all of those Tuesday night concerts are free, so... Come on out, grab your lawn chair, and have a good night on, on the hill. That's fantastic. Uh, are, are all the bands already locked in? What, what kind of variety they can are, we expect? They are. Um, we have a little bit of everything this summer, which we try really hard to do. Um, 
Let's see. We can. I can probably give you the list at some point so that you can get that posted. Sure. So we have the concert band. We have the high school band. We have a Rolling Stones tribute band. Oh wow! Oh, I'm going to be there. Um, that's going to be a good time. We have Detroit Rock Legends. We have a Beatles tribute band. We have a party band. A little bit of everything. It's going to be a really good summer on the hill. That's Can't awesome. wait. I remember a couple of years ago, I came out to shoot video at one of the concerts, and there was a Journey tribute band, mm -hmm. and I met the lead singer, interviewed him, and I was like, you, you kind of look like Steve Perry. He kind of had those similar features. And then when he went out on stage, if you squinted, yeah. you would think you were watching Journey. Yeah. His voice was spot on. He looked the part. It was a great show. The crowd really yep. loved it. Yeah, that was a really good night. I was out in the hill that night. <laughs> I love Tuesday nights. I love the free concerts in the park. Yeah, that's we, awesome. We almost go to every one of those. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. And the kids have a blast on the hill. On the hill. Yo, rolling down in. Tumbling down Parents are enjoying the concert. The mm -hmm. kids are enjoying each other being on the hill and chasing and dancing. And it's such an awesome event. Everybody should come out. And the best yeah. thing about it is it's free. It is free. Exactly. And there's Looking plenty of food, food that you can buy from the concessions, too. Yep. They take really good care of us. I think it's Johnny Black's back it again. Is. It is. We, yeah. They will have food and drink. Um, nice. You can purchase through the concession building. That's great. Little mm -hmm. little trivia uh, trivia that you guys might not know is the name Wildwood, as in the amphitheater, comes from when Scripps owned all of this property and he he started his Wildwood Farms. Correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then uh, after he passed away, the property got sold off to Canterbury, and and Township Hall sits on that property. And yep. so, what yeah. can you give us a brief history of the Wildwood Amphitheater in a in a nutshell? <laughs> when, did, when did we open? Now I, I have know. to use my memory, Joe. I didn't know I was going to need <laughs> that. I can, help. I can Do you remember the caravan yeah. okay. of so, progress? Yeah, so Jill Bash and the former clerk made a nice contribution, and she wanted to see an amphitheater, and other people in the community contributed funds as well. And when Matt Gibb was the supervisor for Orion, at that time he really wanted to just invest in the community so that people could come in and use that amphitheater, whether it was schools or the performing arts, whoever it was, he wanted people to get on stage and enjoy this. And so he really spearheaded that. Mm. And the Wildwood, like you said, came from the what we all call Canterbury, but yeah. it opened during that season. They had a grand opening, and then they had a granddaddy opening another time. But it was <laughs> so much fun. It, but it was a community effort that helped get that started. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Everybody the, uses it. The sound is really yeah. great. Like you, anywhere in that area, you sound like you have speakers right in oh, yeah. front of you, and yes. it's just a lot of fun. And such a, it's it's amazing how the community has come to embrace that venue. It just mm -hmm. seems like it's been there forever, but it's relatively it really new, right? It is so special. Yeah. Yeah, and the parking, the parking is fantastic because mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. used to um, share a parking lot with um, leagues that were happening on the baseball fields. So it was always a struggle to come to a concert and find a good parking spot. Yeah. It's not a problem anymore. Yeah, that's great. It's packed out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. There's always room for more, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people enjoying that Wildwood Amphitheater. That's great. Now, one event I look forward to and a lot of families come out for is Summer Sizzle. When do you have Summer Sizzle planned? Summer Sizzle is coming up in June. I believe the date is Thursday, June 23rd. We okay. try and wrap that around with the first day of summer. Okay. So I believe that's the date, and it's in the evening. And, of course, it's free because that's the best thing about it. Everything is free. Um, I believe it's from 6 to 8 p.m. And so that, in a way, that's about a week in advance of 4th of July, so it's kind of a fun way to maybe kick off 4th of July events and Jubilee and all that stuff going on, so it all ties in. It all ties together. Um, for those who haven't been at Summer Sizzle, what can they expect at Summer Sizzle? Um, Summer Sizzle is... Um it's, I, I want to say it's kind of like a carnival, but it's not the carnival that you'd envision. It's mm. not the big, big uh, carnival rides and things like that. Small tabletop games, uh, free hot dog barbecue, uh, face painting, things like that. And I believe this year we're going to have a surprise. We're going to have an outdoor movie. Oh, okay. That's great. But I'm not going to tell you the title of the movie. <laughs> I'll save that for later. Is uh, Guy Lewis and Chautauqua Express returning this he year? He sure is. He's always a lot of fun. He's a blast. That's great. Now, do you have a partnership with Summer Sizzle to provide volunteers and food, if I remember correctly? We do. We work really close with First Baptist, 
First Baptist Church of Lake Orion, mm -hmm. and they bring their volunteer service out. They bring their youth, and they bring a lot of their adult leaders, and they cook the hot dogs, and they give them away, and then they run the carnival games and hand out prizes. It's a, it's a good partnership. It's really neat to see, like I said, the property out back behind the Orient Center just bustling with family and having fun. That's just, you can't beat that. That's you great. You can't beat that. Awesome. So that's going to be late June. Mm -hmm. And then uh, late summer, now we're talking August, right? August. Big rig gig. Again, another favorite of mine. I turn into a little kid when I'm at that event. Talk about big rig gig. Big rig gig is uh, my favorite event. Absolutely. And it does kind of wrap up the summer season, being mm. in early August. And it's, it's just, you do turn into a little kid. We have all of the big rigs, ambulance, fire trucks, semis, road graders, you name it. It will be out there on site so that you can stand next to the big tires, climb inside, sit behind the big wheel. It's a blast. You got to tune out the horns, but <laughs> those kids it's love a lot. mashing it's the It's always horn. super noisy. Yeah, very <laughs> noisy. But that's always fun. And on occasion, when weather permits, uh, a helicopter lands on site. You think you're going to try and do that again? Of course, I'll try. Mm -hmm. Can't always promise anything because it's always weather dependent and emergency dependent. If there's an emergency elsewhere, obviously, we are definitely low yeah. on, the, on the bar. But... That's yeah. always really neat to see. The, Every once in, in the a while. In the past, it's been what, the U of M, like uh, medical helicopter? Medical flight, yep. Yeah. Or the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. One year, Larry Mullins landed his personal helicopter. One year, we had a, heli um, a hot air balloon take off. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that was very exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> I, remember, I remember I was interviewing you, yes. and I had the hot <laughs> air balloon behind you. And as we were talking, they the flames erupted and they took off behind you. It was yep. really cool It was to very see. exciting. I was very excited. Yeah. That was a very good day. <laughs> <laughs> and the weather was perfect. Let's yeah. hope for great weather for that because yep. that's such a fun event. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, lots of stuff going lots on Lots of stuff summer. to do. Uh, if, you're, if you have little ones and you're looking for stuff to do here locally, there's mm -hmm. just so much going on and Orion Township's doing what it can to give your family opportunities to go out and have fun. I do want to add one thing that we did not mention. Um, this time of year it's spring and our spring youth sports are starting up. Okay. And it's always disappointing when we get a mom or a dad that calls us in April saying, I want to sign my child up for youth sports. We've already started, so it's, it's too late to get mm. on board with that. So what I want to mention is fall sports registration because nobody's going to be thinking May 1st that fall sports open up, but that's what's happening. Wow. If, if parents want to get their child involved in um, youth baseball, youth soccer, girls um, softball, any of those, registration opens May 1st. Okay. Nobody's thinking about fall on May 1st. Yeah, yeah. But indeed it's happening and actually um, July 18th is the absolute deadline for fall. So you have to be registered by that point or you're going to be disappointed. All right. We'll help get the word out. Uh, thanks for joining us. Lots of fun stuff coming up. Uh, we talked about the concerts at Wildwood. Of course, ON TV is there recording all the performances we can cover, weather permitting. And uh, a year or so ago, we were at Wildwood and recorded a band called Itchy Coo Park, mm. which is sort of a 60s type thing, right? Sort oh, of yeah. a retro vibe. Uh, so we have a little clip ready to go to uh, give you a little sneak peek uh, at what you can expect at Wildwood this summer. That's right. awesome. How you guys doing out there? Let me hear you make some noise once again. Come on. Yeah. So tired.
Hi, welcome back to Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson, joined by Penny Schultz. Uh, Penny, um, we talked earlier about the uh, the green up that took place this past Saturday, yeah. uh, but what I neglected to mention is that it's not necessarily a one day only event. Mm -hmm. um, even though people were out and about Saturday and there was a meeting location at Camp Agawam, uh, people are continuing to clean up the community in the upcoming week and the weeks ahead. Um, how can someone uh, use Orion Township's assistance if they want, to, if they have an area that they feel needs sprucing up, what can they do? So get a hold of Aaron Watley in the Parks and Recreation Department area and they have bags, they have all kinds of information they can give you and they'll let you get an assignment. So you can go out and see maybe there's a part of an area or in a park that needs a little bit of attention. They'd love to have you or your sports group or your Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, whoever, get engaged in that. It's still going on. Yeah. We want to make sure that Orion is just beautiful. Yeah, uh, Aaron mentioned to me that uh, local businesses mm -hmm. are, are vowing to clean up the area around their businesses. Yes. And I know there are some perpetual problem areas like over at Joslin and Brown Road that yeah. really need some attention over there. I don't know if anyone tackled that on Saturday, but if you're looking for a project and uh, looking for an area to clean up, I know that would be a good one to try and tackle. And connect with Aaron Watley in our Parks and Rec Pro area. He's our director. Go. And they may be able to provide you with like a reflective vest too, because if you're going to be working alongside the road, you're going to want to have some reflective material so that drivers can see out there. So reach out to Aaron Watley and uh, he'll provide you what you need to, to get out there and, and keep this community beautiful. Uh, speaking of Orion Township, we're just about a little over a week away from the state of the township address. Uh, Chris Barnett is gearing up to uh, talk about what's been happening in Orion Township over the past year. And it just so happens to fall on May the 4th, which many people, including me, refer to as Star Wars Day. So there's going to be a little bit of a fun Star Wars theme during his presentation. Um, but uh, if you're great. interested in, in having uh, Chris recap all the exciting mm -hmm. things that have been happening uh, in Orient Township over the past year, you might want to attend uh, the State of the Township. Do you, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, this is exciting. People don't want to miss May 4th at 8.30 at Woodside Church, right there on Joslin Road, across from the old township offices. And we're so happy that they're hosting this event. Chris will be ready for you. The program starts at 9, but you can go ahead and get gathering in there at 8.30. We hope to see you there. Yeah, that's always a lot of fun, and, and Chris always plays up the yes. rivalry between Rochester Hills he and makes Auburn it fun. Hills, and yeah, it's pretty entertaining. And of course, Owen TV, uh, well, we're actually relying on Woodside Church mm -hmm. to record the presentation, and then we'll be playing it back on our channel in case you miss it. But it's definitely something you want to see because, you know, as we keep saying throughout this this program today is there's just so, so much going much. on and this has been a really Beautiful. big year for Orient Township mm -hmm. including new the new municipal complex which includes the sheriff's office so yes. um, this has been a huge year for Orient Township. Incredible year and so much is still happening that really needs the community involvement. Yeah yeah definitely so um, so much going on and um, there are a lot of sports going on right now high school sports and as Jennifer mentioned uh, Parks and Rec Sports. So um, how about if we do a little recap of some recent activity that's been happening in the world of sports? So the high school spring sports season began with terrible weather, as you can see. Cold and rainy and even snow flurries uh, met Dragon athletes right in the face. Oh, that looks miserable. Uh, many games had to be rescheduled or moved to the, uh, due to weather and field conditions. Uh, Lake Orion track uh, got underway with a road meet at Oxford High School on April 3rd. Uh, the men uh, took uh, the win with 83 to 45 dominating throughout the meet. Uh, the Lady Dragons came close but lost 81 to 48 uh, to the Wildcats. The following week the Dragons hosted Clarkston in an OAA Red dual meet. Some highlights are on your screen. The weather was not much better with rain falling most of the night. Uh, boy, that was a tough stretch there. You know what they say, April showers. Uh, the Dragon men again dominated, taking the win 78 to 50. Some top performances uh, were from senior Stephen Brown, 
uh, winning the 200 meter dash and helping win the 4x100 and 4x200 meter relays. Brown is one of the top sprinters in the region. Uh, senior Logan Crocker won the shot put with 36 feet 9 inches. Lake Orion's depth was too much for the Wolves. The Lady Dragons battled throughout the meet but came up to short. Clarkson took the win with a tight one, 57 to 53. Senior Elena Tisch again showed why she's the one to watch again this season. Uh, she won the 100, 300 meter hurdles and anchored the 4x100 and 4x200 meter relay. Tisch currently is the top 100 meter sprinter in the region. On April 20th, the Dragons hosted the Rochester Falcons at Dragon Stadium. The men continued their dominance over OAA Red opponents, taking the win 102-26. The Dragons swept the relays and sprint events. They moved to 3-0 on the season with one more dual mate at Adams on May 4th. This meet will determine the regular season OAA Red champion. Adams will be the Dragons' toughest challenge this season, so it'll be a good one. And the Lady Dragons also performed well against the Falcons, taking the win 78-53. Depth and relay dominance earned the Dragons their first win of the season. Their record now sits at 1-2. and two. And in other sports, uh, women's soccer has performed well this season. Moving up from the white division to the red has not held back the green and white. They keep on winning against non-conference foes. Their biggest test was against Troy Athens on April 21st at home. Athens is state ranked and came into this match sitting at 5-1 on the season. Their only loss coming at the hands of Anchor Bay. A Athens and Lake Orion battled to a 0-0 halftime score, or nil-nil I should say. A uh, few scoring opportunities for these tough clubs made uh, for a back and forth defensive game. And in the second half, Athens was the aggressor and earned several corner and free kicks to, the, to test the Dragons defense. Uh, Athens would break through the Dragons defense at 26.58 mark. One small mistake by the Dragons defense allowed the Red Hawks shot along the end line, which deflected in for the long goal of the evening. The goals were tallied by uh, number four, Athens captain Abby Main. The Dragons fall 1-0. And to close out this uh, sports segment, the Lady Varsity's lacrosse team is ranked 14th in the state of Michigan and continue their tradition of being one of the best teams, not only in the OAA, but the entire state of Michigan. ONT will be airing select lacrosse, soccer, and softball matches all spring. Tune in to the Game of the Week on Comcast Channel 10, AT&T UVerse, Channel 99, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 7 p.m. The latest games uh, in our lineup you can catch. Replays can also be seen on the Educational Access Channel, Channel 22 on Comcast as well. So, that I was a mouthful. I love that you are covering the sports. We have some incredible athletes at our schools. We try to bring a little variety of yeah. everything. You know, there's always a lot of focus on football and basketball, but uh, we try to get our, our crews out there to shoot a little bit of everything, and uh, it means a lot to the athletes that are, that are taking part. That was a great update, Joe. So, yeah. Um, so let's see, what else is going on? Oh. Uh, the uh, VFW Post 334 are gearing up for a big fundraiser that's going to be coming up uh, beginning Mother's Day weekend. Uh, I'm sure we've all seen uh, VF VFW representatives on the streets selling their mm -hmm. poppies. Uh, make sure you have some cash on hand yes. um, because uh, you want to support that organization that's doing great things uh, in the community. We have uh, we had them in the studio recently where I got to sit down and talk with some representatives of VFW Post 334 and uh, here's a little clip from that interview. Can you give us a little history, Randy, of, of the, the poppy sales and, and how it impacts the VFW? Well, we, we've been doing it for several years. Uh, especially, it's our highest uh, amount of money that we make, but a lot of the money goes out towards our veterans and the community. We donate a lot of money to the fish and uh, various different other groups. So That's fantastic. So. Tell me how it works. We've seen you guys on the roads and stuff, so how do you organize that? How do you make it happen? Well, we have a schedule. I usually do all the scheduling. 
and uh, of course we go through all the checks with uh, uh, Orion Township and stuff like that to give us permission. We have permission for every place that we go and every road that we're on, we have a, a permit for that. Mm -hmm. I know the people get tired of it, <laughs> but it, it's such a great thing. It helps a lot, a lot of people, so. Yeah, I would imagine a challenge you face today, and Chuck, I think you and I had talked about yeah. this a while back, not a lot of people carry cash on them anymore. Does that pose challenges when you're out there not having your drive? It, it does, but a lot of people, if they don't have the cash, they'll come back. Oh, wow. Oh, they'll go inside and try to get some cash somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's happened several times. So. And I assume there are other ways to donate. If you don't have the cash on you when you're out and about, how else can somebody donate? They can, if they get their checkbook with them, we'll take checks. Oh, wow. To us, it's the same thing as cash. But uh, we also have each one of our members, our post office box. So they can send money to that box and uh, we'll take it there, you know, send a check in. And we do get quite a few people that physically, they, especially with COVID in the last couple of years, people couldn't go out. So that uh, once we started our program, they would turn around and send checks into the post office box, and uh, which we really appreciate. That's fantastic. Do either of you, any of you know how the poppy became the symbol of the VFW's drive? It's, yeah, it was, what's his name? Uh, Colonel McCree or something? John yeah, McCree. Or? John McCree, yeah. John McCree. Uh, World War I, but, uh, basically. And uh, I don't know the whole thing. I should, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, he, he, was, he was a Canadian uh, poet. And one of his good friends uh, passed away in, in World War I. And he was out there for the sermon. And it was in, in Belgium. And the, the cemetery they had for our troops at that time was basically a poppy field. Mm -hmm. So he was there for a very sad occasion for his friend. But he also, he came up with the poem for the Buddy Poppies that represents not only his friend, but for all the ones that were lost in World War I. And mm -hmm. uh, the representative was that Buddy Poppy. And the uh, VFW turned around and uh, signed up with the, a group that was trying to get recognition of this around the world. Because uh, the Buddy Poppy program is not just a U.S. program. It's in Canada, it's in England, it's right. in France, it's in Australia. And they're a little bit different, but just basically it's the same thing. Canada, like we have our little red flower that we hand out. They have a red and they have a white one, but they're made from ceramics versus ours is this little piece of cotton. Yeah. And a little bit different. And uh, so that program kicked up, and this is World War One. And all the years since then, right. we've been doing buddy poppies. Hmm. And it's always around Mother's Day. And we go out, to, uh, like this year, for the second and third weekend in May. And uh, we'll be out there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, be it warm, be it cold, be it raining, hmm. be it snowing. We will be there. You might get all of that in one day, the we, way things are. Yeah, the way the, the weather is, we have no idea. <laughs>
where yeah. they present a check to the fish food pantry and adopt their pasta shelf. So mm -hmm. where you see the uh, spaghetti sauce and pasta and all that, that is VFW Post 334 uh, providing that to the, the fish food pantry all year long. So it's a great and, opportunity. Yeah. And then Memorial Day is right around the corner, and so uh, we'll see them at uh, Memorial Day events. I hear, heard rumors that the parade might be coming back this year after a two-year absence. So have you gotten confirmation of that? I have no confirmation, but boy, am I hopeful it's coming back. <laughs> we missed those things the last couple of years. What yeah. a great community builder that is. Yeah, so there's that 5K, which is going to be the morning of uh, mm -hmm. Memorial Day. Uh, then hopefully the parade will return. I've heard rumblings that it'll be back. And then there's the ceremony uh, at the wonderful Veterans yes. Memorial on Lapeer Road that you drive by every day. Uh, so Memorial Day is going to be full of fun events uh, to honor uh, those who served our country. Yes, and you don't necessarily have to run in that 5K. You can walk, <laughs> you can roll, whatever you need to do to get in there and to help. So. Um, Check out uh, the Orion Township website. There's more information about that 5K. Yeah, and so continuing our theme of talking about all kinds of exciting things happening uh, in the near future, uh, we have a little segment that we like to present on each episode of Orion Today called Quick Hits. And here's a look at some upcoming events that you can enjoy. Join the Wint Nature Center this Friday for Dance of the Timber Doodles. Enjoy an evening with a naturalist to learn more about these timber doodles. Participants will venture into the park and hopefully witness one of nature's great performances. The program will take place outdoors and begins at 6 o'clock. Pre-registration is required by calling 248-858-0916. Buy nearby and shop local on Saturday at the Mother's Day Market. Shop this one-of-a-kind arts and craft show featuring Made in the Michigan products. Made by Michiganders for Michiganders. The market will take place at the Orange Center from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission and parking is free. Join the library on Sunday as it continues its spring concert series. The Ukulele Kings will be performing at 2 o'clock. The whole family is invited to this kid-friendly concert as the all-ukulele trio performed clever originals and select covers. For more information, visit orionlibrary.org. On Monday, May 2nd, adults with special needs and their caregivers can join the Orion Library for stories, songs, movements, and activities. The Special Needs Adult Program, also known as SNAP, will begin at 12.30. For more information, visit orionlibrary.org. The Orion Township Dragon Dash 5K is just around the corner. The race will be held on Sunday, May 15th at the Orion Center. Check-in begins at 7.30 and the race begins at 9.00. For more information, visit OrionParks.com. Well, that's it for this week's Owen TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So as you can see, so much going on. And Penny, you just reminded me that there's a fun event that's going to be coming up soon. Uh, Orion Township is looking for teams of kickballers to take on each other over at Miracle Field uh, in Friendship Park. Um, they're, they're reaching out to municipalities, but businesses can form teams as well. Uh, it's a day-long tournament, and uh, there's an entry fee, but all the money raised at the tournament uh, will go to the winner's uh, charity of choice. Uh, so that sounds like it's going to be a blast. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, so visit orientownship.org or get a hold of Jenny Body in our supervisor's office, and she'll be sure to get you signed up, get you more information. Yeah, so I haven't played kickball in a long, long time. Um, but that Miracle League uh, field wow. is just a, just a gem. Uh, it's relatively new. It was just built a few years ago. Um, basically what it is is a... Uh, is, um, uh, handicap accessible field that has eliminated any bar uh, barriers for people in wheelchairs or on crutches where they can play sports like softball and kickball and other things like that and the community again has really embraced it and Friendship Park I mean what can you say about Friendship Park there's so much going on there it's too. It's beautiful people should just go there every single weekend with their family <laughs> it's agree. a wonderful place to gather there's so much opportunity to be outside, meet new neighbors, and just come together. It's a gift. It's something that we want you to enjoy. 
Yeah, and the trail system, you know, we talked earlier that the Dragon Dash is going to be on the Pollyann Trail. That used to be a uh, railroad, right? And uh, Michigan has taken part in that Rails to Trails program where they're converting uh, railroads into trails. And Pollyann Trail is a great resource. Paint Creek Trail is a great resource. Yeah. Uh, I need to get back to biking on uh, Paint Creek Trail. Uh, there was a period of time when I lived near the entrance of Paint Creek Trail, and I would bike into Rochester, have lunch in Rochester, and bike back. And that would make for such a nice day. And you would see wildlife on the trails, turtles, mm -hmm. deer, tur uh, everything. It's, uh, have you done that? Have you really I taken advantage of those walk it days? and ride the bikes once in a while with my daughter. Um, but she's on it all the time. Her family is. They absolutely love it. And I'm so glad people are engaging that way. The library has bikes you can rent. Did you know that? Oh, no, I did not oh, know yeah. that. Oh, yeah. So if you want more information about renting a bike or borrowing a bike with your library pass, get a hold of the library. I think everywhere you go, people just want you to get engaged and get outside and enjoy what we've got. Great natural resources here. Yeah, I think what I'm going to start doing, uh, because where I live now, it's difficult for me to access the trails right from my bike. So the Orient Center, where we're at right now, is a perfect entry point to yes. Pollyann Trail. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my bike here to the Orient Center, keep it on location, and then when I want to go biking, I can drive up to the Orient Center, plenty of parking, yep. get on my bike, bike the Pollyann Trail, and come back to my car. Yes, so and anyone can do that. Anybody can do what Joe just described. <laughs> we want you to get out there. That's yeah. a great idea. I'll join you. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I need to get more active. You know, if you're like me over the last two years, there hasn't been a lot of activity. And I think some of us have paid the price. So I got to get more active. I, I need to get out there and uh, burn some calories. I want to follow Jennifer Vesna around. <laughs> oh, man, is she having fun. And she's making sure the community engages. Jennifer does it well. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, you noticed uh, during our interview with Jennifer earlier, a lot of the programs that she referred to are free. They are. And there's a reason for that. Do you want to elaborate on that? Why are these amazing programs offered by Orient Township free to the public? Because the township residents, the voters knew how important it was to use these beautiful resources. They approved a millage. And we want the dollars that have been approved by the voters to go back out into the community and support the things that they love. When surveys are being done, people are finding out what we, what we as a community want to have more of. And we hear from our community members that said, we want more parks. We want more engagement on the trails. We want these safety paths to be supported. And our Parks and Recreation Department is hearing loud and clear and they're putting into um, service whatever the people are asking for. There's a pickleball court coming. Mm. That's something that people want. They want more trails. They want more playground opportunities. And that's what's really taking place is that we're hearing from the community. It's being supported by a millage. And we're putting everything that we can into the community, sewing back into them. Yeah, and the township has a little feather in their cap as well. I was When I was talking to Aaron Watley from Parks and Rec yeah. uh, over the weekend, he said that Orient Township is a tree city USA. Amazing. That's pretty awesome that we're protecting mm -hmm. our natural resources yeah. here in the township. Yep. Everything we do is for you. We want you to enjoy it all. Yeah. So I, that pretty much wraps up this episode of Orion Today. Penny, it's a pleasure uh, sitting here chatting with you today. I hope you had fun. I did. And Thanks, hopefully Joe. we'll see you again soon. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time uh, live on ONTV on Orient Today.